This is a clip from the Canon Podcast. To hear the full episode and get access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod and sign up for just three pounds a month. Vieira, I think for Vieira, what doesn't help him is he's got a slight frame. And I think fans don't, I don't know why fans don't like it. It's him, he's a person, right? He's a player. But whenever he comes on, they're going, oh, Fabio Vieira's coming on. You know, the people in the crowd, the proper gazers. Um, I ain't big enough for the Premier League and they get bullied. But I could see why he came on because we needed someone to actually, you know, get the ball into the final third and actually cross the ball in. So I was, I was, I was surprised to see, well, not surprised, but some Arsenal fans, you know, they get a bit emotional at times. But George, break down to me Fabio Vieira's performance and should Arsenal fans be now excited for him going into the future? Look, I think he's a player that I like. Everybody knows that. You know, it's somebody that I've really believed in for quite a while. And I think he offers something in the squad that nobody else does. That's That's been my biggest proponent for Fabio Vieira. And I think that we, in this cameo, by the way, I don't even think that we necessarily saw the special quality, I will say. I think the one thing that we've seen is his supreme crossing ability, but we knew that. I think his efficiency of final action and his efficiency of final ball is among the best in the squad. And I think the one thing that you did see in this cameo, and I kind of had this as like a very valid criticism from people where I didn't feel he was aggressive enough in his actions. And it wasn't the player I scouted. I very much, when I kind of sent out my scouting thread, I talked about how this is somebody that has an excellent creative hub that's got every pass in the locker, no angle bias, and somebody that can absolutely deliver in multiple areas of the pitch. And I think when what we've seen, for example, is a player that's been a little bit more laid back, a little bit more conservative and not up for the challenge. And I think in these last few cameos, by the way, because it wasn't just this one, even at Monaco when he was playing right wing, I felt as though he was one of our better players in preseason. And I think that there's a different level of intensity that he's approaching to play. In terms of what he gives us, look, the qualities are quite clear. In terms of half space crossing delivery, there's nobody in the squad that gives us that level of the Trent Alexander-Arnold, the Kevin De Bruyne type half space crossing um, trait. That that trait is something that we don't have. It's something that we don't access. And when we're facing more and more low blocks, that's something that fits. One thing I do want to caution for as much as I love Fabio Vieira, and I wish I could just sit here and say, I told you so. The one thing that I have to warn caution to is balance and something that I don't think that we did at Fulham. And it makes no surprise to me that a passing profile on the left thrived. Guys, we've talked about this for a lot recently, and I think the recent struggles of the left-hand side has been because we have a collection of runners there. Eddie and Kedia, Kai Havertz, Martinelli, what do they all share? They like to run into the same spaces, and fundamentally, introducing a passing profile, it could have been any passing profile, but introducing one that was a passing-dominant player in that space was always going to make it thrive, and so... For me, I'm glad it was Fabio Vieira. And that cameo, he did more than just be a passer, right? Like he absolutely affected play in terms of A, becoming an option wide. He was getting Martinelli inside. He was very purposeful in terms of his actions. And again, I don't think he was isolated to the left. He did very good work on the right as well. And he was making things happen. And if not for a little bit of chance in terms of that bicycle kick, he was just influential in making us have a level of threat that I think that the team did lack. Now, moving forward, can he take that cameo and kind of build on it? Absolutely. I think he needs to approach now the rest of his time with the same consistency of final action and the same aggressiveness, because that's what I think is key. Not the final ball, not the assist, not the flashy final action stuff that we know he has. It's that aggressiveness in his all-around play that I feel he showed and has shown in preseason, to be fair. But I think that's what has to continue because last season, that's what fans were missing. It wasn't the fact that they couldn't see his ability. And in fact, I think if anybody really critiqued Fabio Vieira, it was never because they couldn't see quality in the player. It was because, listen, bar a final action, what else can he do? That was the criticism that I heard a lot. And to be fair, it was fair at the time. I just think he needs to take the next step. And I will say with a, with a proper preseason and actually embedded in the team, I mean, there's definitely an environment for him to do that. I think the position playing on the left-hand side of midfield, it's open. Yep. Havertz hasn't been outstanding. And you've got Smith-Rowe potentially there as well. Trossard's played in games. But if Vieira can break into this team now, Alex, 
do you think he could become a first-team starter and take over from Havertz and really push him to a new level? Because look, this is what you have when you've got a competitive environment where you've got players now to come off the bench. Think about in past games, past years, you know, bringing on Vieira, Nketiah, Jorginho, we have high-quality players coming off the bench now. But now I want to see that first team, I guess, challenged now, isn't it? You know, we've seen Mikel Arteta throw Havertz straight into the team now, but we've got quality of the bench and you see Mikel's using his team a lot more, using his squad a lot more often. Do you think Vieira has the quality this year to break into the Arsenal first team and I think surprise a few people as well. It's very possible. It's very possible. I mean, that left central midfield slot is open. Let's be clear. It's absolutely open in terms of who's our first pick in there. And, you know, that might be the thing that that varies and rotates through the season and that might be how Arteta wants it. But is there a shoe in for the left eight right now in the same way that Martin Odegaard is on the right? No. Something I will say on Fabio Vieira, and I know I've, I've been outspoken in my criticism of him. I'd, I'd, uh, chime with what George said in terms of it was never a case of I can't see that he's talented he's a very talented player my concern was about his ability to impact games especially when he starts I'll say something against him and then I want to finish on something for him something that I think is often certain ga- certain games suit players right so if you think about it let's say there's 80 minutes where uh, against Liverpool the other day uh, Anthony Gordon was you know running against Trent or whatever, and he gave him a really hard time. And then Harvey Barnes comes on. Now, Harvey Barnes couldn't really affect the game, but in let's say in another game, Harvey Barnes might come on and score two. And in that situation, after 80 minutes against tired legs, against the fullback whose strength isn't defending, Harvey Barnes could look like a world beater, right? It's a and, and in that situation, that's where you want Harvey Barnes, running at tired legs and defenders. Do you want Harvey Barnes starting, controlling play, coming into midfield? No, you want him in the right situation. And I think in that in, in that same way, that game was almost set up for Fabio Vieira. Like I, I described it as like the dam earlier, like the, the, the floodgates opened and that left-hand side was accessed, especially through Zinchenko. We had the, the situation with Nketiah. It's not, to, it's not to take anything away from him. It's to say that the game was really well set up for him. The credit I want to give him is that he has done that. Like you can't do more than you, you are given the opportunity to do. So credit to him for that. And I want to say that in terms of moving forward, This is uh, something that actually uh, George mentioned as well. If we're thinking about our right-hand side and we're thinking about how to access those those areas and those zones, if we if we can't use Partey in those zones, if Partey's not going to be able to 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 create that that dynamic on the outside, the other way you can do it is you can ask your eights to do that and run a bit more onto the outside and also access and allow Saka to come inside. Can I see a world where Martin Odegaard comes over to the left left left-hand side? And we see those kind of threaded passes. We see a bit more half space crossing on his probably favoured side or probably an easier side to access. And a world where Fabio Vieira goes to the right and spends more time out wide, creating that overload for Saka. Yeah, I can. And if he can do that, I can really see a first team opportunity coming for him. And as I've always said a hundred times, and I've probably memed about at this point, if he's good, I'm happy because Arsenal are better. I don't like this idea that like we get into camps about like wanting to be proved right or wrong about players. What I want is Arsenal to win. That's what I want. And if and, and I've said before, Fabio Vieira, I'm not convinced by, but I can definitely see a pathway and that is forming for him to come in and do really well. And if he does, I'd be buzzing for him. Thanks for checking out the Canon podcast. To get full episodes and access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon pod and sign up for just three pounds a month.